international trade from East Africa. There are a lot of ships and containers here. Where could they possibly all go? Everywhere, Luanda. This is Kilindini Harbor, East Africa's largest port, shipping everything from grain to minerals such as copper and soda ash. This port has been famous for many years now due to its natural harbor. Doesn't Kilindini mean deep in old Swahili? I am guessing the deep natural harbor is the reason for that name. Hey, I didn't even know that. I learn something new every day. I know a few things too. So, why exactly did you bring me here? Well, it is important to know how the international trade came to be and affect Kenya. Sayid knew that the goods from Kenya were very valuable around the world. He put forward his best effort to connect and network with many different trading partners. This would ensure he could make as much money as possible. So this goes back to being one of the reasons more and more foreigners were coming to Kenya and East Africa in general. You got it. Said worked to get Indian traders or Banyans to work and live in Zanzibar due to their occupation and history of lending money. He believed this would increase trade and he was correct. You acquired valuable workers and traders, okay. But whom did he expand trade with? Said expanded his reach to the Western world, being Europe and the Americas. He was eager to make trade agreements or treaties with USA, Britain, France, and Germany. These agreements gave the countries rights to obtain the goods and even opened up operating offices in Zanzibar. Wow, Zanzibar must have been a commotion of motion. A what? A very busy city. Yes, indeed. It should be noted that Said even put the local Akamba, Agikuyu, and Midikenda in contact with the new trading partners. It didn't even use it as a political control, though. What do you mean? He simply expanded upon the existing trade routes and caravans we talked about, rather than have a say in government or ruling. And why did you bring that up? This left Said vulnerable to being attacked and conquered. As a result, he and the rest of the sultans after him became closer with the British in trade and as using them for protection. And is that why the British eventually made Kenya a colony? Mm-hmm. Great connection. Yes. The British began to have a lot of influence politically and religiously in East Africa, which I speak about next. Isn't this lesson almost over? Almost. Before I speak on Christianity, Let's go over how international trade changed East Africa as a whole. More review? Fine. Again, the most obvious is the introduction of the new trade items. Guns and cloth from the Western world came to be here in Kenya. Also, the new crops that were traded, like maize. Easy. There was an emergence of more powerful local leaders that took advantage of these new weapons. How did the local leaders use the weapons? The need for slaves was growing, as we have discussed, and so did the brutality of gathering humans. At the same time, the world was slowly growing smaller. I mentioned at the very beginning that trade was a main reason for foreigners coming into Africa and this can be seen as a step towards colonization. By the British. Correct. The wheels were in motion already for the European powers to take the place of the Arabs. The European powers came in and saw the slave trade and its cruel and evil nature. This and the presence of Islam made missionaries come running to spread Christianity. 
So Christianity finally did begin spreading. I thought the Portuguese failed at that. Let's go take a walk and look at some churches. Fanta, first. Deal.